rider pulled himself off my jersey to win the race. Couldn't get, he got there and he pulled himself off my jersey and as he got there, I thumped him. I was the bad boy. And that's where it started. Basically, I was no worse than anyone else. But when they put a photograph like that on the front of a cycling magazine, everyone's Barris is a nasty bastard, isn't he? But all I was doing was looking after myself. And the poor, innocent guy who I thumped just pulled himself off his jersey. There you go. I've got broad shoulders, I can take that. I have a reputation I won't be messed with. It's in my nature. I won't be pushed around. The majority of my wins were as a professional cyclist. In those days, you were either professional or an amateur. And if I count them, then across the line first, there's about 190. But if you count GCs in stage races, green jerseys, it's slightly over 200. But before that, as an amateur, I won about 80 bike races. So that's 280. And since then, I've dibbled and dabbled and probably won another 20. The highlights of my career, some would say, would be yellow jersey, green jersey, stage tour of Switzerland. But I feel I've had better wins. London Holyhead, uh, 265 miles from London to Holyhead. We won that in 70 and 77. So I was really proud of that. Yeah, it was a big, big race in its day. I grew up with Tom Simpson as my hero and Tom won that race in 65. So I wanted to emulate Tom and win it. So that was, yeah, I won it uh, five years after Tom won it. Which is unfortunate, he died in 67. I had Tom lived, I would have, I would have raced with him as a pro. So that was quite sad. Thought there was one, but then... If you win a bike race now, you'd get a thousand photographs. If you won one, then you're lucky if you got one. At the 200 races that I've won as a pro, I've probably only got 15, 20 photographs. If the letter's in there, it's relevant. It's not the one I was looking for. I've got one where I was left out of the Olympics in 68, and I'd won 19 races, and I sent two riders. I'd won one race each, and that made me a very nasty anti-British Cycling Federation BC person. And I was left out of the Olympics and I should have gone. No one shouted for me. So I turned professional. And suddenly he kept on going, and as a result of his attack, the field split and six men have come together. And there with Tural is Eddie Burks, Sid Barris, Phil Baton, Keith Lambert and Steve Lee. Sid Barras, Super Sid, the man that everybody has said would win this race. Barras on the front again. He's worked so hard, this man, Barras. What a superb sprint from Barras. And that gives you an indication of what this man, Super Sid Barras, can do. Eddie Merckx was the greatest bike rider ever. 540 professional wins. I cut above everyone else. And I beat him. I was really, that's one of the best, best moments. Confirmation of the result. Tural West Germany takes it. Sid Barra second. Eddie Merckx third. Keith Lambert fourth. Wonderful. It's gone on without tire levers. Here, haven't you used tire levers?
If you were riding for a team, you'd have a get together, a training camp somewhere. You would talk about the season, penciling what the highlights of the season were. And then basically, it was up to you. I had a guy called Huey Porter in the team, a Bantel. That I rode seven years with Bantel, and Huey was a, a four times world pursuit champion, very knowledgeable. Got a lot of advice off Huey on how to train and what to eat and whatnot. Well, basically, you were on your own. That's just how it was. We didn't have dietitians, it's one year, physiologists, psychologists, and none of that. You were on your own. The vast majority of my racing was in Great Britain. Someone else in this top class field going to spring a surprise. There's Sid Barris, the winner last week in Manchester. Alongside him, Phil Baton, the British circuit champion, keen to do... The British season, you could have a 120-mile race one Sunday, and then midweek you could have a, a one-hour criterium in the city centre. And then the following week could be London Holyhead, 260 miles. Manchester last week, in front of a crowd of 35,000, Sid Barris wins round four. I like to train on my own. I always do my best rides when I train on my own. And I would almost ride my bike every single day of the week. I wouldn't have a day off. Monday would always be a, a couple of hours just riding part of the cafe. Tuesday I would get into it. Usually three and a half, four hours on my own, making efforts over the, for the tops of climbs and, and things like that. Wednesday was always the big ride. Up to six hours, not managed at all. I managed it. Left up to individuals in those fields. On the line, three, two, and one. Barris is gulping in as much air as he can get there. He got through very a, lo a lot of pro cyclists are overmanaged now. Can't eat this, can't eat that. Lo you must lose a kilogram. No, no, that would have been out the window with me. It's sorry. Here's the result of the king of the sprints. Anderson confirmed as the winner. Five points. Barris. The young kids now, you have the sort of knowledge at 12, 13, 14 year old that it took me to get to 23, 24 because we didn't watch any pro cycling. We had to learn through through mistakes. The bikes in those days were heavy and not aerodynamic. We didn't have anywhere near as many gears. The climbs, you have it to use big gears. Those were the days where you knew exactly, if you, for one pedal revolution, you knew how far it would take you. I, I remember that particular winter bike, it had a 61 inch gear. For every pedal revolution, you travelled 61 inches. And it, it teaches you to pedal because you have to have a lowest gear. So it taught you how to pedal fast, gives you leg speed. Leg speed is what wins bike races. You could be the strongest man in the world, but if you don't have leg speed, you ain't going to win. I was fairly strong for a little fella. I also had a lot of body strength. The skinny guy didn't do that good in those days because the bikes were heavy. Eddie was a big guy, six foot one, and he was 12 and a half, 13 stone. And he had this power and the strength to just churn that big gear. The middle of careers went up some very steep climbs. In 69, I remember as if it was yesterday, there were six riders clear at the bottom of Fleet Boss. We'd have gone up there on 44.25. And we were going like that. That's how it was. And I caught them, descended with them, got the bottom and punctured, and there was no service. And I finished last on the stage. From, from potentially winning that stage at the top of Fleet Boss, punctured, finished last. No service. That's what we used to race on. And the difference in weight. We're riding at Morecambe. A criteria and we're warming up and I was riding talking with Rollo 
and Linda was with her mates from uni laughing at us on, on the other side of the fence. And I looked over, I said, I fancy her. And Rollo, been a cheeky scouser, just rode straight over and embarrassed me, said, he fancies you. And then I won the race and she was on the finishing line. So that, that was it, that's 49 years ago. I don't show Linda that one, she doesn't like it. 1971. 1971. My dad taught me maintenance on bikes in the late 50s, early 60s. Being from a poor working class background, you couldn't just go to the bike shops and and pay them to do it. I had a tough upbringing. I was brought up till our five, six year old in the house with my grandparents, two uncles who had been to war, a lodger, he had no house, his house had been bombed, my mother, my father, my two sisters in a, in a small terrace house. My mother, put detonators in bombs for six years during the war. She had to get up to five and drive them from Middlesbrough to a place called the Acre, 26 miles, and then work a 12 hour day, six days a week, putting detonators in bombs. My dad was the same. He had to drive for the military between plants, heavy lorries, and then when he'd finished, he was on home guard, 16 hour day. And they had to survive. It must have impacted on me really. We were fairly poor as well, but good loving family. Very happy. Yeah, I knew that. I could see that was I always had too much energy as a child. Run to school, run back, run around all day. I was brought up in the days where a teacher could belt you around the ear for looking out the window. And I was one of those kids. Always looking outside, thinking of what I was going to do away from school. Thinking of playing football, riding my bike. I hated school, not academic, but you put me in any sport and I excelled. Any sport and every sport. Good footballer, uh, swimming, running, cricket. In the gym, in the gymnasium, I could do anything. I can still walk on my hands. My father raced before the war, mid-30s. He, he took me to the bike shop when I was about 12 and bought a load of new equipment for it. And that was it. Joined the club at 13 year old. One ride that we did sticks in my mind. 62, 63, so I'd have been 14. And we rode from Middlesbrough, Richmond to Reith, Gunnerside, over the Buttertubs Pass into Hawes and back by an 120 mile on a fixed wheel with a big heavy bike that was too big for me. The first race proper when I was 14 was the, the North East Schoolboy Championships and I won it. Once I was North East champion, that was the start. I finished racing at 39 in, in 1987 as a pro. And then I had a bit of a dabble in 1995. When I was about 47, 48, I won the Div Champs. And then in 2008, I won the National Champs. And I was third in the World Champs. Bronze medal in the Worlds. But I had no team. And a lot of the Continental teams had up to 10 riders in. But the last 
sort of win I had, I was National Vets Champion in the over 60s. So I was 60, but I beat the guys that were 50 as well. My best claim to fame as a veteran, I was second to Scott Thwaites in the 60 miler at Teesside when I was 61. If I could nip down the road to race, I would do it. But the fact is, I've got to clean my bike on a Saturday night, go to bed early, put my bike in the car and drive 100, 200 miles. I had 30 years of that. Traffic racing was good. Just a bit of competition. Track with the lads. I won the cafe racing sprint for Gargrave eight times when I was 60. It's nonsense really, but it was a buzz. The adrenaline kick, better than drinking Red Bull in it. You know, I usually get dropped, but that, I'm not bothered about that. You get my age, you lose muscle. You lose muscle, you're on the, you're on the way out. You're on your way to that wooden box. I'm not ready for that yet. There was a very rigid code among cyclists in the 50s and 60s. You had to be polite to each other. You had to be polite to other road users. If a cyclist came the opposite direction, you had to at least smile and nod to him, if not raise a hand. If a cyclist passes me now and doesn't acknowledge me or say good morning or anything, then I will sit on his wheel and annoy him. Uh, I don't have to say anything. I do that. I won't say it too often because it's not very often I get caught. Linda thinks I'm an antagonistic, an, what's the word? antagonistic little bastard. Well, she, yes, I am. I agree with her. If you ride a bike a lot, like me, you get a lot of idiots. I've lost count of the amount of motorists that have got out to me. I wouldn't cut anybody up in a car on my bike. And I wouldn't. I wouldn't give anyone that. My dad used to say to me, don't pick on a man if you don't know what he's capable of doing. And I say that to them when they get out of the car now. Don't pick on me because you don't know what I'm capable of doing. When you're brought up on a rough council estate, and you're a little fella, you've got to look after yourself. Five foot eight's little, isn't it? I'm, I'm fit, fit as a lot. But as I say, I reiterate it, I've never picked on anyone in my life. Just the opposite, I'm soft. I'm soft. I've, I've stood up for people who've been picked on many a time. I think I was successful because I could look after myself. You only get out of life what you put into it. A lot of hard graft, really. People just wind me up the way they are. Just abusing themselves, they don't do any exercise. They're just looking at screens all day. I hate a lot of life. A lot of modern people now I have nothing at all in common with. I was out a year or two ago, and the guy said to me, haven't you got a Garmin? I said, no. He says, you want to get one, it'll teach you a lot. Bit me tongue. Never had anything on my handlebars. I'm a bit of a fool, really. I did all my racing, 18 years, 21 if you count me, international amateur in 21 years, without one, I don't need one. And people that sit and talk about bikes all day more and shit out of them. All a Garmin would tell me is that I'm half the man I used to be. It's obsession. We, we have an obsessive society now. I am not interested in having followers. I don't want celebrity, I don't need it. I hate it, I hate celebrity. I hate that word, I won't watch anything on television with the word celebrity. I'm a man of my time. I'll ride a 
riding up the hill and I got to the first house. And there was a bee on the road. And I stopped. Put it on a flower. Couldn't have left it. And I think that sums me up.